you have love for one another. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. What would you do if tonight was your last night on earth? Would you want to try and check something big off your bucket list? Would you want to spend the night alone or surrounded by friends and family? For all that you've done in your life, all that you failed to do? I wonder what would happen if on your last night on earth someone showed up at your door that you didn't want to see. Maybe it's a Jehovah's Witness or a Mormon missionary. Maybe it's someone from your neighbor's pet control company trying to sell you on a service. Maybe it's the person who wronged you in the seventh grade. Maybe it's the person with whom your spouse had an affair. I wonder, what would you do? Would you turn them away? Would you invite them in? Would you want to bury the hatchet or would you want to let them have it? St. John says that Jesus knew this was his last night, that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. How was his friends noticed about him that evening? Did he seem different, cheerful, somber, manic, calm? Do you think they had any inkling that something was up, that he knew something they didn't? Because he does, doesn't he? He knows what comes next. The arrest, the trial, the execution. He knows that one of his closest friends gathered with him that night will betray him to the people who want to kill him. And what does Jesus do with this information? Knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he had come from God and was going to God, Jesus got up from the table, took off his outer robe, tied a towel around himself. He put the water into a basin and to wash his disciples' feet. The towel was wrapped up. friends, denial of Peter, not even the betrayal of, Jesus, of Judas that determines what Jesus does next. Although he feels it, he does not let the heartbreak, the disappointment, even the evil he is about to face set his course. Instead, he washes the feet of James and John, of Andrew and Nathaniel, Thaddeus and Bartholomew, but not just there. He also washes the feet of Peter. He washes the feet of Judas. I, I, I can guess what Peter seems very uncomfortable with this whole thing, doesn't he? Lord, he says, you will never wash my feet. Why do you suppose he's Thursday foot washing. Is it because we think feet are Does it have something to do with making ourselves vulnerable? Allowing someone else to see and touch and smell a part of our body? This might be why Jesus chooses this as his sign of love in this night. I wonder if he enjoyed the task or if he was repulsed by it. 
Do you think he was moved to tears by the beauty? Is he grateful for the chance to show his friends? Or maybe was he resentful that none of them really understood what he was doing? Or did he pity them for that? What do you suppose he felt when he came to Judas' feet? Anger? Sorrow? Disappointment? Fear? Did he rush through the task a little bit quicker with Judas, or did he linger? Did he hope that just maybe his overt and embarrassing act of love might sway Judas's determination just enough? The story doesn't tell us any of those things, but we can guess, because we're human. Like Jesus. And I think that is one of the keys to understanding this story. Because we are all capable of feeling and imagining everything that each of those people felt that night. Jesus. What might seem alien to us is Jesus' choice in the midst of all of these emotions to choose love. To choose to wash his disciples' feet, even though he knew that they would desert him. He chooses to wash Peter's feet and Judas' feet, not to heap burning coals on their heads, as St. Paul suggests, but to show them that no matter what they did or didn't do, this love would always bind them together, that this was their share in one another. They would forever belong to him and he to them, even Judas. Having loved his own who are in the world, John says, Jesus loved them to the end. To the end of what, I wonder? To the end of his life? The end of his strength? The end of his ability? To the end of the world? Why love in this moment of all moments? Why, when his hour had come to depart, does he choose to show this extravagant kindness to those who do not deserve it? Why, at the end, does he choose to act in love rather than in anger or fear or sorrow or any of the other things that he might be feeling? Here is St. John's answer. Jesus chooses love. Because he knows that he come from God and that he is going to God. In other words, he knows who he is because he knows who God is. God is love. He knows that he also is love. God's love made flesh. John says that Jesus is God's word. attribute transformed into a person. I think he means that Jesus is a human person. God shaped him, breathed life into him, called him his own. He knows that it is this love that gives him life, that the life that it is given is now returning to love. Turning to that love, life is renewed, given new form, perhaps, because love is endless. is that in washing, in the washing of the feet and the giving of his body and blood, Jesus has not only shown himself to be the love of God made flesh, he's shown us that so are we. 
you also are God's body made flesh. We also are God's body and blood of life, broken and given for the life of the world. Because we are each of us sons and daughters and children in the same way as our brother Jesus. He shows us with his whole life what it is to be fully loved and to love fully. What it is to be truly human as God first imagined that in the beginning. Because to be truly human is divine. Humanity is created in and by for God's love. Created in God's own image. I think the only difference between Jesus and us is that he believed that. That he believed it so deeply that he entrusted his life or we can't believe such a thing. We have a different image of humanity, one in which people must be deserving of love, one in which love is sometimes impossible to give or to receive, one in which life is finite and fragile and must be protected, one in which rather than sharing ourselves with one another, we hoard and protect them. And so we abandon God's way we deny God's truth. We betray God's life unto death. And the lie we believe instead becomes our way, our truth, our life. When Jesus issues this commandment to love one another, I don't think he's ordering us to have affection for one another or to be nice to each other. I don't think he's telling us to deny the feelings of anger or sorrow we sometimes cause one another or the harm that we do to ourselves or each other. In fact, I wonder if maybe one of the things this story shows us is that there is room within love for all of those things. For fear, gratitude, pity, sorrow, disappointment, even anger. I wonder if, with this commandment, Jesus is inviting us in the midst of all of these things, swirling around us tonight, to choose love. Because love, God's love, that's who we really are. I wonder if he's inviting us to experience for ourselves how this love, this complex, messy, self-sharing divine love is actually the truest definition of what it means to be human. Not the lie we've come to believe instead. My friends, if you hear one thing tonight, one thing, hear this. This love is for you. Got that? It is given for you, it is shed for you, it is constantly broken and killed and raised to new life for you. So that you may know that this is the love from which you have come, and this is the love to which you are returning. Day after day, always returning. This love is for you because this love is who you are. It is the image in which you have been created. Your form and your purpose. And this, this was your last night on earth. You knew you were about to return from the love from which you what would you want to be the last thing that you did?
Now trusting that this is not your last night on earth, I wonder what might be stopping you. <laughs>